Oh, hey guys, how are you doing? So, I thought I would do a quick thought experiment tonight because there's a few viral videos that have gone around and they talk about do we actually need men and what would actually happen if men vanished from the world. So I was thinking about a hypothetical situation where all the men in the world just magically vanished. What would actually happen? I thought we could look through this and highlight some of the jobs that men typically do. Men are 99.2% of vehicle technicians, mechanics and electricians. Based on that, we would very quickly see the breakdown of a lot of vehicles, the breakdown of a lot of uh, technology, which, you know, women would very happy you know, quickly have to train and, um, you know, try to maintain the system, but I think large parts of the system would very quickly collapse. So there'd be a lot less cars on the street, um, simply because although you could train a lot of mechanics, bringing the 1% up to basically deal with 99% of um, the issues is going to be very, very difficult. General construction is going to see nearly everyone vanish, right? Because it's mostly men on construction sites. Electricians and electrical fitters. So this is a real big one because you have an awful lot of power plants in the world and there's also a lot of um, junction boxes and all kinds of electricity all across the world. Again, with 98.2% um, of people who are electricians vanishing, you're going to see massive blackouts all over the world. You know, there's going to be mass chaos because a lot of mobile phones are going to stop working because the tower is going to stop working. So communications would also break down pretty rapidly around the world. Metalworking production. So again, massive loss of factory workers and people who were sort of building heavy things. A lot of women do actually work in industry, but nearly all of the people who were sort of in the um, supply side, driving heavy goods vehicles and whatnot, um, most of them are men. There's going to be massive supply issues all around the world. A lot of supermarkets are basically going to sell out very, very, very quickly or have all the stuff taken. So I think there's probably going to be a lot of riots because people are going to be very, very concerned that the supply chain isn't actually going to be good enough to feed everyone. Plumbers and heating and ventilation engineers. Again, in a lot of hot and cold countries, this means more people are going to die if these services break down. Yeah, mobile machine drivers, forklift drivers, heavy goods vehicles. So yeah, we have 97% of heavy goods drivers being men. And even the people who do international shipping, you know, most of them are going to vanish. You know, the global trade network that kind of keeps everyone fed is probably going to break down. And I think you could probably get a lot of emergency people in. But again, that's going to take time, a lot of farming, you know, sort of not working and the logistics to maintain tractors and stuff, all the technology to actually maintain the equipment to make farms work. Um, that's not going to really work. So I could well imagine a lot of people <clears throat> basically moving to the country and trying to um, grow food and be a bit more self-sufficient over time. But I think there's going to be, you know, mass exodus of the cities. The cities are going to be pretty horrible places. Um, nothing's going to work. Like I said, a lot of the vehicles are probably going to break down and we won't have the skills to fix them. We can really see themes here. So all the themes of building society and maintaining society, a lot of drivers in general, Refuge and salvage operations. So again, you will notice that, you know, your trash won't be collected. So there'll be massive piles of trash on the streets. Again, 93% male here. You know, you would have to get women collecting trash, for example, which I'm sure they would do. You'd have to probably pay them a lot more than you pay men to do this kind of job. Van drivers, 92%. Bus and coach drivers, rail transport operators, the trains are not going to work, the buses aren't going to work. A lot of fire services, 91% are also going to vanish. And I think in America, I think about 60% of the fire services are actually volunteer males. Everything that basically helps society run and grow from a physical point of view is going to be massively disrupted. Now, just um, to 
play devil's advocate here, what would actually happen if all the women vanished? Nursery nurses and assistants, legal secretaries, childminders and related occupations, medical secretaries, personal assistants, teaching assistants, housekeepers and related occupations, dancers and cartographers are going to vanish, educational support assistants, psychologists are going to vanish, uh, pharmacy, receptionists, pharmaceutical technicians. Obviously, if either men or women all vanished from the face of the planet, the um, planet would absolutely crumble. It's highly likely the human race wouldn't survive. But nevertheless, 84% um, of nurses would go. Physiotherapists, care workers, play workers, nurses, welfare professionals, officers and non-government non organisations. Cleaning and housekeeping, sewing machinists, sales administrators, local government. So it seems like um, a lot of the bureaucracy would vanish. Pharmacists. Oh, I didn't know that. That's quite interesting. 74% of pharmacists are women. Office managers. 71%. Do we need men? Well, the simple answer is yes, if you want to maintain civilization. Do we need women? Yes, if you want to actually keep civilization running. <laughs> we need both men and women. Both play equally important roles. Every single job here is important, right, to society. You might be wondering why there is this massive split. Why is it that 99% of um, people in vehicle, technician, mechanic and electronics. Why is it 99% male? I guess some of it might be um, societal sort of expectations, but I think a lot of it is just out of the fact that men typically like things more and women typically like people more. And uh, obviously that doesn't apply to everybody. You know, you might get a person who really, really, really loves people and hates things and ideas. And vice versa, you might get a woman who's um, a genius engineer. There are actually a lot of women who are genius engineers. Uh, Temple Grandin springs to mind. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I will speak to you guys later. So you might be wondering, as implied by the video, why men do a lot more difficult and dangerous work. Well, I think they firstly have to provide for their family. And even though men and women work equal rates now, roughly, in the West, I think men still feel obligated to basically, you know, do the difficult and dangerous work because a lot of the time there is a bit of a pay premium in some of these fields and they really need to bring home the bacon to their family. Men really need to feel that they are actually being useful and I also think there's a big purpose void so a lot of men really may not have very strong role models growing up seeing as how a lot of kids are father deprived. Men live on average about 8% less than women. Men also work about three to four hours more per week in their jobs. Men are still, for example, overwhelmingly expected to pay for meals on the first date. They still feel like they want to be the main breadwinner. I think a recent survey said that about 70% of women and 80% of men said that they want men to pay on the first date. So it's not just um, the first date, there is an expectation that men should be providers. And uh, I think the world is changing and men are really struggling with that a lot, of, a lot of the time because actually in nearly every major city, women are actually out earning men right now. Women are graduating higher education at a much higher rate than men. Men are much, much, much more likely to drop out. Men are also 24 times more likely to be arrested. Even when men go into professions like nursing, for example, men are far more motivated by money. So we'll, they'll typically go towards the areas that pay the best. Whereas women will typically choose a better work-life balance over pure monetary gain. It does seem when men and women have freedom, they often choose very different careers. And this entirely makes sense. 
I strongly believe that every single job should be open to everyone where possible. I also think an awful lot of people, men and women, are basically invisible, hidden by money. We don't necessarily see where our goods and services are originally produced. We don't see the conditions that women in Bangladesh are working in, for example, making a lot of our clothing. Around the world, men and women suffer. And I think all we can really do is try to be a bit more compassionate and we should try to be more aware of where our goods and services come from. And we should also be aware that the whole of society is based on invisible labor that we don't even see, as I said. Anyway, guys, I hope this gives you some something to think about. And uh, yeah, thank you.